<coughs> Pardon me. Let's go to Psalm 103, verse 1 through 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, for this time I can preach your word. I ask you to touch me, anoint me, anoint those who hear this. I ask you to help them have ears to hear. And Father, if anybody is out there who hears this, is not saved or backslidden, I ask you to deal with them especially. Help them turn to you with all their heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases. The benefit of forgiveness is what I'm preaching on tonight. You know, years ago, there was a church over in Tucker County. I can't even remember its name. But it somewhere up above St. George, West Virginia. You'd have to be there to really understand it. <clears throat> Only those who've ever been to St. George would really understand it. Maybe in Fairhaven, I forget the name. It's been closed for years and years. I don't even know if it, I don't know how long ago it closed. But anyway, I, I preached at St. George, but that was way back around 1987, the last time I preached there. But anyway, in this church way up on the mountain, they were having a revival years ago, and there was this man, the pat, the preacher was really preaching strong, and he finally said to the people that they need to get up and invite people to the altar to be saved. And this one man at the church got stirred, and he went to this other guy in the service. He walked up to the man. He started to talk to him about his soul. He asked the man this question, Sir, do you know Jesus? He said, no, I reckon I don't. Would you like to go to work for him? They said he lit up like a Christmas tree. And they said, he smiled, he said, well, yeah, I'd like to go to work for him. I got a nagging wife and six children at home. My job at the mill's ready to close. How much does he pay an hour? <laughs> You know, that man may not get a benefit of an hourly paycheck working for Jesus, but there's still benefits serving him. He may not get a, a, a week-long vacation every year or health care, though I want to tell you, he does heal our diseases in that sense. But I'll tell you what, back to vacation. He has a vacation plan. It's out of this world and it's eternal. Ha, 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 ha. But I tell you tonight, we need this benefit of forgiveness. Why? In Genesis 3, we read about the man in the Garden of Eden. Up until then, man was in a state of perfection. God, they had a perfect relationship with God Almighty. But one day a serpent came to the woman and tempted her to eat of the forbidden fruit. You know what she did? She, after they, after he wrestled with her and tried, you know, verbally tried to get her to see that God, God looked unfaithful. That's how the devil tries to destroy our faith. He tries to say his word is not any good. I got news for you. God's not a man that he should lie. He is son of a man that he should repent. Half he's not sin, shall he not do it? Have he spoken, shall he not make it good? This book, the Holy Bible, I have right before me is God's divine word. All scriptures given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. It's, amen, it's true. And I'll tell you what, if it's not true, then God's not true. I'll tell you how I believe Romans chapter 3, verse 3 and 4 says, 
let God be true and every man a liar. So I accept that. She sinned. Then she took the fruit and gave it to Adam. And thanks to that, all have sinned and have come sure of the glory of God. Death entered into the world. Death by sin. Man and woman didn't die right that very moment physically, but they died spiritually. And now the curse of sin is upon all man. For now the record is, for all have sinned and have come sure of the glory of God. I'll tell you what today, I believe in Romans 3.23, we have all sinned. We were all come sure of the glory of God. The Bible, what is sin? It's the transgression of the law of God according to 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Amen. What else? It's the missing of the mark. The missing of the mark of God's righteousness. You know, some kind of like an arrow. It's like when you shoot an arrow out to a, to a target. You know, it's when you fail to miss that bullseye. The bullseye of God's righteousness. Today, we have all sinned. And have come sure of the glory of God. Sin separates us from God. Amen. The Bible says. Amen. But your sins have come between you and your God. And he will not hear you. Isaiah 59 verse 2. Today we're separated from God through that one act of sin. But not just that one act of sin. But our own personal sins. The Bible says, Psalm chapter 51, verse 5, David in his prayer of repentance said, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. He recognized that we were all born with that principle of sin, and that we will all go astray, and that we all will do things that we will not, that will not please God. We were born sinners. Yes, we choose the sins we do, but we're born with that disposition to sin. I'm going to tell you something today. We have all sinned. Both the man, both the, the people who are in church and those out of the church. I'll tell you what, just because you're born in a church doesn't make you righteous. What makes you righteous is, is, Jesus, is God's plan for redemption because of that sin God hates sin he's a holy God the Bible says be ye holy for I am holy saith the Lord 1 Peter 1 16 the Bible says amen holy 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 the Lord God almighty because God is a holy God he cannot look upon sin with any degree of tolerance and as a result, he, he's a righteous God. He has to require that the soul that sinneth shall die, Ezekiel 18.4. What is the death? It's not just the physical death, it's eternal death. Separation from God in the lake of fire, in hell in the lake of fire. In Luke chapter 16, verse 19 through 31, we read about the rich man Lazarus. The rich man died and spent eternity in hell. He's still there now 2,000 years later. It wasn't because of him being rich he died lost. It's because he did not know Jesus as his Savior and Lord. I believe he went by. He occasionally would feed that, that poor man. No, I don't believe he died saved because he was a because he was poor, I believe because somewhere along the line, he turned his life over to the Lord. And he died. And he was carried. The rich man. It's very deep. God has provided the way for man to avoid sin, the punishment. First off, we got to realize we cannot save ourselves. Isaiah chapter 64 Verse 6 says, Our righteousness is as filthy rags. Did you know that none of us can save ourselves? We can join a church. We can be baptized. We can uh, be faithful to church. Come on. I believe there's going to be people dying right out of church pews and going to hell. I believe there's going to be people dying in pulpits. 
split hell wide open. Just because your preacher doesn't make you right. No, no, no. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. You can give to uh, all the poor people you want to. You can give every penny you have. If you don't know Jesus, He won't send you to heaven. The law was weak through the flesh. According to Romans 8, 4. I'm telling you, the law cannot save. Good works cannot save. The Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. Not of uh, works. Lest any man should boast. Isaiah chapter 2, uh, Ephesians, I mean chapter 2, 8 and 9. Not of works. And let me add one thing. Lest any man should boast. You know, many people boast because of how good moral people they are. Realize when Jesus dealt with a new birth, he wasn't talking to a prostitute then. He wasn't talking to a thief then. In John chapter 3, he was talking to the most upright man in Israel by the name of Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, an upright man, a deeply religious man, a devout man. But what did Jesus say? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3, 3. John 3, 7 says, Marvel not that I said unto thee that you must be born again. You know what happened? He's telling us. Not just Nicodemus. The only way we're going to get to heaven is through God's substitute. When Abraham took his son, Isaac, to sacrifice him, he was given a... I, Isaac asked him, where's the lamb? Abraham said to his son, Behold, the Lord himself will provide a, a lamb for sacrifice. You know what happened? He was talking about Jesus. He was talking about Jesus coming. <laughs> See, Jesus, the Son of the God, a living God, the second person of the Trinity, became flesh for us. He was the everlasting God, mind you. Jesus is just as much God as the Father of the Holy Ghost. He is from eternal to eternal. He became a man, born of a virgin, took upon the flesh and as the Bible says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life today he came in the world why to die for the sins of mankind when he went to the cross he didn't do it because because of any crime he did. No, he obeyed the law of God. He knew no sin. He became sin for us. And today, if we receive him by faith, we can be forgiven. What happened? He died on that cross. The Bible says, Romans 5, 8, God commends his love towards us. And while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. <laughs> he paid that ultimate price for you and me. Amen. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, it says, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. A chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Thanks to that, we have forgiveness. That benefit of forgiveness, we have the benefit of divine healing. But today, Jesus took our place on Calvary. As Rollo Swisher said, it took more than nails to hold Jesus to the cross. The bonds of love held him there. Amen. He could have called ten thousands of angels, but he died alone for you and me. Today, sinner friend, if you don't know Jesus, uh, amen, you need to repent of your sin and by faith receive him. He died on that cross, but he none more than died. <laughs> Three days later, he arose. As the song goes, up from the grave he arose. 
to triumph over his foes. I tell you, I love these songs. Wish I could remember all the words. <laughs> but I tell you what, today, he provided forgiveness for each and every one of us. I tell you what, I don't know what sin you've been involved in, but the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, can forgive you. For the Bible says, 1 John 1, 7, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. He rose from the dead. And according to Romans 10, 9, 10, For if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved with a heart, man believe unto righteousness. With a mouth confession is made unto salvation. Today, thanks to Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and for, amen, we can have forgiveness with him. As the Bible says, there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared, Psalm 130, verse 4. I'll tell you something today. He rose, and today he is at the right hand of God, ever living to make intercession for us. Uh, amen. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, that says there's only one mediator between God and man, and that's the man Christ Jesus. I'll tell you what, he died for you. Now he's at the right hand of God the Father. Amen. Intercede for you, friend. Today, if you don't know Jesus, you say, oh, my sins are too horrible. Let me tell you, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, can save the worst sinner. He saved John Newton, a slave trader, a man who was blasphemous. But you know what happened? He saved him during a horrible storm. And today, every time we sing the song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. We're talking about, uh, we're hearing a song, a song written by a man who was a blasphemer and a slave trader. But the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleansed him from all, that, from all those sins. And God rose him up and he became a great preacher of the gospel. And thanks to his influence, a, a man by the name of Will, William Wilberforce got involved in the abolition movement and got eventually illegal, the slave trade. Amen. I tell you today, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, makes a difference in the lives of many who've tried it. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Today, friend, you need to do what everybody else had to do. You first had to recognize your need. We've all sinned. Don't try to deny that. You know what I like? I like it when a sinner man or sinner woman tells me I'm a no good for nothing sinner. You don't want me at church. Woo! Those are the ones I want to reach out to. All my sins are just so bad. God will never want me. I'll tell you what, friend. Amen. That's just the devil telling you that part. You're a sinner. Yes, you're a horrible sinner. Yes. But thank God Jesus came in the world to save you. Amen. And I don't care how bad of a sinner you've been. I don't care whether you've murdered somebody. Look in the Bible. Moses, he murdered a man. But look what happened. God forgave him and rose him up to be a great leader of the children of Israel. The apostle Paul was salt Tarsus. He had many of God's saints put to death, but thanks to that, but thanks to the encounter he had with Jesus, in Acts chapter 9, he was gloriously saved, and God called him to preach, and he became the great apostle, the apostle Paul, who wrote the majority 
of the New Testament we read under the divine inspiration of the Word of God. Today, sinner friend, it don't matter how horrible your sins have been. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son. You must recognize that need. You must repent. It nay, except you repent, you shall likewise perish. Luke chapter 13, 3 and 5. And then I, Acts chapter 17 verse 17 verse 30 says, Amen. This ignorance God hath winked at, but now hath commanded all men everywhere to repent. That's sorrow for sin. Godly sorrow. Not because you were caught in your sins. No, no. You know what real repentance is? I heard a story some time ago. I think I read it in one of my sermons recently. I know I did. <coughs> this man got a pardon for his brother. He was facing the death penalty, if I recall correctly. He went to that, his brother. He had the pardon right in his pocket. You know what happened? He asked his brother, he said, Brother, what would you do if you could get out of prison? He said, First thing I do, I go look up that witness that witnessed against me. And I kill him. Second thing, I'll look up that judge. It may, I may have it in reverse order. It don't matter. I'd kill him. You know what that man did? Being grieved, he walked out of that prison, never giving his brother the pardon. Because see, that pardon was only for him good if he repented. Sorry for his sin. Amen. Jefferson Davis, I understand. And, you know, if I'm telling it wrong, I remember reading it. I think I remember even the paper I read it in. I think it was the Free Press from Union Rescue Mission years ago. They had a story how before, how he was offered a pardon one time. And he refused it. He said, listen, a pardon is only good for those who would not do it again. They have a chance. I'm not going to get right or wrong or whether he should have led the Confederate. We're, we're not even going to cover that issue. He said, listen, I would do it again if I have a chance. Repentance is. If I get out of prison, I'm going to go out and live the best life I can. I'm going to treat people different than the way I did. I'm not going to have that affair anymore. Amen. I wish more people in the church world, because I don't believe you can be saved and be an adulterer. No, no. Or a homosexual. Or a drunkard. If you're really repenting, you're sorry to the point where you'll never want to do that again. And then by faith you receive him. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Boy, I'm feeling something now. Amen. John 1.12 even as many as believed on his name. Can I tell you something? Jesus changed this sinner man. He used to call me hippie chippy. That's how wicked I was. Amen. But thank God, the blood of Jesus Christ saved and forgave this man on December 7th, 1978 at the counselor's office at Davis and Elkins College. I tell you today, I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus right now is my intercessor. It don't even matter. It don't have to be sin. But if I need something financially, he's willing to he'll listen to my prayer. If I need a healing, he'll listen to my prayer and he'll answer. If I need with a, help with a situation... Amen. Whether it's in the church, on the job, in my family, it don't matter. He's out there right now on the right hand of God the Father, ever living to make intercession. And today, He's willing to forgive you. One last story about my conversion. I didn't get converted that this morning. I'm ready to tell you, but I still appreciate it. This testimony, this lady, I remember her well. 
one Monday morning while I was studying, I think it was Monday, it seems to me it was, <coughs> for the William James House program, <coughs> the study period I was required, she came up to me, and she t uh, started talking to me, introduced herself as a tutor. I'll never forget the question that was dealing with snake handling, I won't, whether it was constitutionally protected or not, I, I'm not covering that issue. But thanks to that question, I believe it was God ordained. Regardless whether right or wrong, constitutionally, it's wrong biblically. I can prove it, but I'm not here to deal with snake handling right now. I'm here to deal with salvation through the blood. She witnessed to me that day. She told me that the Lord could take care of any burden I have, and He can. And he does. Hallelujah! He can do that for you. He can take care of any sin burden you have and any other burden. If you just turn your life to Him today, please don't put off salvation anymore. Though your sins are as red as scarlet, they should be white as wool. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. That's your heart's door. I know I'm knocking on the pulpit. Don't worry. I'm just doing it. Behold. It's Revelation 3.20. Behold. I stand at the door and knock. If any man. Jesus knocking at your door. Don't say no. Say yes, Lord. Come on in. God bless you.